Hello again, uh, it's time for another introductory video, in this case uh, experiment number 8. Uh, in experiment number 8 we will look at logic gates and we will learn how to use them in a, a breadboard, hook them up, uh, test them, measure voltages, etc. So um, first of all, uh, we know that uh, the, the voltages that we apply to these logic gates are real voltages, uh, real analog voltages between 0 and 5 volts. However, we classify them as having two uh, discrete levels, two binary levels. We call them logic 1 and logic 0, or high and low, true, false. We give different names to them. But typically, uh, these, uh, these voltages um, are, when we measure them, you will not see just 0 and 1, right? You will see some actual voltage. So typically, in the logic circuits, okay, um, and this is for logic circuits that use 5 volts, what you will see is, um, uh, if you see between 2 to 5 volts, uh, this is considered logic 1. So I'm, I'm, I'm making it... Um, a little simpler than it actually is. There are some other uh, small differences between inputs and outputs, but I'm just trying to simplify it as much as possible so that you don't you're not uh, thinking too much basically and maybe confusing yourself. All right, and then zero to 0.8 volts. Uh, this is considered logic zero. So if you measure voltage between uh, 2 to 5 volts, consider that to be logic 1 and between 0 and 0 0.8 volts uh, to be logic 0. Um, uh, in, in effect, uh, you will probably see voltages that are uh, much, much uh, higher than this. So in effect, this 2 uh, probably should be a 3, really. You should really see 3 to 5 volts. 2 is actually pretty low. But in some some cases, it might be as low as 2 volts. But, so, if I was to be, you know, as, as clear as possible, I would say even that, um, that this is true, that we have about 3 volts. So, 3 to 5 volts, logic 1, 0 to 0 0.8 volts, logic 0, uh, which means that the range between uh, 3 and 0.8 volts is the, you know, no man's land, and if a voltage lands in that 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 region, uh, we don't know how to classify it. So all of the circuits that we use that are logic gates are designed to give you these ranges and not give you anything in the middle range, you know, ba basically between 3 volts and 1 volt or so that is no man's land. So anyway, logic circuits that use 5 volts uh, as the power supply voltage, right? So this this voltage is the power supply voltage have this characteristic right so what that means is if you want to apply logic one to a certain gate uh, well you better have at least three volts right but in in most cases you're gonna have five volts okay uh, second case logic zero well you know if you're gonna apply logic zero to a gate you better have something less than 0.8, between 0.8 and 0, basically. But in most cases, you're going to apply exactly 0, right? But a lot of times, um, it's not what you apply, but, you know, we have gates connected to gates, connected to gates, connected to gates. So it's not what you're applying to the first set of gates, first set of inputs. It's what those gates are outputting that are being the inputs to the next set of gates. That's why these ranges are kind of important, okay? All right. Having said that, uh, how do we apply voltages to inputs of gates? For example, let's say we have an OR gate, right? We have an OR gate. In fact, uh, one part of the experiment, um, you will actually be applying, a, you'll be testing an OR gate. So here's an OR gate, right? Very bad looking OR gate. And, you know, we typically have inputs, let's say, A and B. And then we have output Y, 
right? And uh, what's not shown here, of course, are the power supplies. So this needs to be powered up. This gate needs to be powered up. And we'll see it in the diagrams that I will show you next. But typically, uh, we have to have a power supply voltage here. We call that usually VCC. VCC, that's the power supply voltage variable name usually. This is for us typically 5 volts. And then we also have a ground terminal for each of the... Um, you know each of the gates and this is typically for us you know obviously ground okay ground or zero volts right so this is what we typically have so um, you know when we make an OR gate you know we say okay apply a high voltage at A high, apply a low voltage at B so on and so forth but how do we actually apply let's say a high voltage at A well do we go and apply 5 volts directly there we don't do that, and the reason we don't do that is because if we apply a 5 volt directly to this terminal A, a lot of maybe a lot of current will go in through that terminal into the gate, might damage the gate. So we employed something called a, a pull-up resistor to limit the current. This is very very similar to um, the the things that you would have seen where we have like logic that's based on switches and, and resistors. A lot of times resistors are ser resistors serve the purpose of limiting the current in the switches. So this is exactly kind of what happens. So we don't apply uh, directly 0 or 5 volts there. So basically what we want at A, you know, we want uh, 0 volts or 5 volts, right? Let me... You clean that up okay so we want to apply 0 or 5 volts here and of course B uh, 0 or 5 volts there and 0 is easy we just connect that pin to ground and that's pretty much it but 5 volts you don't want to directly connect 5 volts to A or 5 volts to B what we use is we use basically what's called a pull-up resistor and a switch so what we're gonna do is um, both for A and B we're going to use a structure that looks like this. 5 volts, a resistor, switch, and ground. Okay, This resistor, we're going to pick this to be a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Okay, And then this point here is what's going to be going to A. Right? That's what's going to be going to A. So if you look at this structure and this switch, okay, What's going to happen is A is going to be equal to what? It's going to be equal to approximately 5 volts with the switch open. Okay, and it's going to be approximately equal to 0 volts with the switch closed. Okay, so if A is about 5 volts, right, and we're applying that to A over here, right, uh, that means this is going to be how we apply logic 1 to A, right, and with the switch closed, that's kind of how you're going to apply logic 0 to pin A. Right, Because if we have the switch open, like what I'm showing right now, if the switch is open, Okay, think about it. The switch is open. If the switch is open, then basically there is no current to the resistor and the 5 volts directly appears at A. Okay, but if the switch is closed, then A is shorted down to ground, right? So by doing this, the 10 kilo ohm resistor will limit the current that is going into the IC, the integrated circuit, when we do uh, apply these 0 and 5 volt uh, cases, right? So again, this is 0 volts or 5 volts, right? 0 volts or 5 volts. And, of course, if we have this for A, we're going to have something very similar for B, right? Very similar for B, you know, 5 volts, right? Resistor, switch, ground. 10 kilo ohms. So in your kits, you have 10, uh, two uh, uh, 10 kilo ohm resistors, and we're going to accomplish this by using 10 kilo ohm resistors and, and a switch. Okay, so uh, in the 10 kilo ohm resistor, um, you should be able to find in your in your kits. Um, hopefully, you will find that those colors, right? I think you know how to do that. 
Okay, so uh, what do we have now? Uh, well, what we have now is we have the ability by choosing the switch on and off, right? You have two switches. By choosing those switches on and off, we have the ability, okay, to apply a one or a zero, basically, to the logic gate, okay? Now, the thing that you probably haven't seen yet, haven't used yet, although it's in your kits, is the switch, okay? How does a switch look like, right? So what we have done here is we have two switches, uh, two resistors, and we have power supply and we have ground. Well, the the switches in this in this case, right? These these uh, these switches um, are in fact going to be constructed by using these guys that should be in your kits. Something like this uh, or similar. Okay. So it's, if you look at it, uh, they have these the little legs, right? Just like the integrated circuits, and these are called a dip package, dual inline package. There's dual or two rows of pins. Pin to pin distance is about 0.1 inches. It will, it will go directly into the, uh, uh, the breadboard. It will fit right in. And if you look at the, the little uh, the, the, the pins here, you notice that on one side it says open, on the other side it says 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There are eight of them, right? And there's little push buttons, right? Little push buttons. So if you push the button, uh, to one side where it says open, you open the switch. If it's on the other side, actually as shown on the diagram here, as shown on the right picture, that means the the switch actually is closed, right? So if it's closed, that's going to be your logic one. If it's open, it's going to be, uh, sorry, if it's closed, it's going to be your logic zero. If it's open, it's going to be your logic one, right? Now the thing is, you might have different uh, kind of switches and it'll be apparent which one you have, if you have exactly this or something different. But you can easily figure out how to do it because when you measure the signal, you'll see exactly what you're applying at the pins that you're applying, okay? Um, I can even demonstrate to you how this may look like, okay? This may look like. But before that, let me show you the, the, you know, the first thing that you will do. First thing that you will do is uh, you will test, uh, you will taste, test what's called uh, and... Um, OR gate, right? You test the OR gate, and the OR gate, okay, here's the, here's the part number for the OR, or gate, 74LS32. Sometimes this is just called a 7432. This is an OR gate. Not, uh, not only is it an OR gate, but it's actually a quad OR gate. So there's actually four of these gates in one package, right? There's four OR gates in one package. Let me show you the, the, the picture for this. Okay, let me show the picture. Okay, so the 7432 is right here. And here's the integrated circuit as it looks from the top. So there's a little notch here, or there's a little circle near the pin one. And you read the numbers, just like you the timer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, eight, nine, up to 14, right? So pin 14, you always connect to power supply, Pin 7, you always connect to ground. And if you want to use, for example, one of these OR gates, you, you, you put your inputs at pin 1 and 2, and the output comes at pin 3. That's all it is. So quad just means there's four of them. That's all it is, okay? But no matter if you use one or two or three or four, you always have to power up. If you don't power it up, nothing will happen. So that's your 7432, okay? 7432, okay? Um, so if you want to use, let's say, one of these, you know, um, you will just have to pick one, basically. So if you go back here, you can pick any one you like here. You can, let's say, make the input 1 uh, and 2, output 3. You can do that, right? So the way you would kind of wire this up, okay, and you, if you wanted to do that, just pictorially, you could think about it this way, right? You could think about it this way, okay? So input is, um, you know, so you have your A and B here, right? And then uh, this is your Y, for example, right? And then you have uh, two more pins. You have the 5 volts and you have the 0 volts or ground, right? And then uh, this is just your 74LS32. Sometimes they will write as a 1 quarter 74LS32, meaning you're using only one of the four in that package, okay? So you might see those on schematic diagrams. And then uh, as far as pins, right? 
you have pin 1 here, pin 2 here. I mean, you could have done 2, 1, doesn't matter, right? Pin 1 and pin 2 are inputs. Pin 3 is the output. And then pin 14 is the power supply. And pin 7 is your ground. And that would be your connections. Now all you got to do is hook this up. Okay, hook this up. How do you hook this up? Or how do you put it on the uh, breadboard? Well, let me illustrate that, okay? Uh, there's a program that I use to illustrate all this, and it's just it's just visualization. You can do it different ways. Okay, you can do it different ways. Uh, there are no um, rights and wrongs here, but uh, some it, it, when you use things a certain way, when you do things a certain way, sometimes it may be physically easier. So it may be physically easier, uh, but it it's certainly up to you. These are just suggestions more than. You have to do it this way, right? It's not a, it's not a must, okay? So, so first of all, uh, let's say we want to uh, hook up what I just showed you. In other words, we want to put together a circuit that looks like this, right? And remember, for A and B, the way we're going to generate A and B, right, is by using something that looks like this, right? Right? By using a 10K, and we're going to use these switches. Of course, remember, these switches are not you know, visible to us, they're inside this box, right? They're inside the box. Okay, they're inside the box. In fact, here's that box, and there's eight of them in there. So it depends which two of them you want to use. Option, right? Maybe you don't want to use one and two, right? Because they may be too close. Maybe wiring becomes a little more difficult. Totally up to you. Totally up to you. So let's just try it, though. Let's just try it. So first, th for the first thing I would do is I would get the the switch in there. Now, the switch that I'm going to show you here, it's a little different, okay? So let me zoom in to show you how it looks like. In this switch, um, you kind of click these things up. You know, uh, the, the switch that we have in our kit typically is the one that looks like a push button, right? So you, you, you rock the switch either one way or another for on or off. In this particular switch, right, uh, it works exactly the same way. There's still eight switches, but if you click the button in the higher up, up position the switch is closed in the bottom position the switch is open i'm sure you can figure it out anyway so this is what i have okay this is what i have and i want to now hook up uh, the system for um, my two switches so what i would do is i will get my resistor first okay first of all I, what i'm going to do is i'm going to make this terminal here i'm going to make that my five volt terminal okay so i would say this is my five volt terminal so this would go to power supply plus, and I would make this one over here my uh, ground terminal. And everything that you're seeing in yellow right now, that's ground basically. If I connect anything to those pins that's in yellow, they're going to be grounded. Anything that I connect up here to those yellow pins, they're going to be 5 volts. Okay. So you have to visualize a little bit that this, these two pins... The two blue ones that I've just driven, drawn, this will go to the probably those uh, connector pins on the side of the bread, breadboard, 5 volts, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my switches A and B. So what I'll do is I'll get my 10K resistor here, okay? Um, and this is the 220 resistor, but I can make it 10K if I want to. But imagine these are just resistors, okay? So you get your resistor and... Uh, Right, let me just search for it here and get it. Just hang on a second while this program loads. So let me get our resistor. Okay. All right, so let's get a resistor. Uh, maybe I get. Uh, Maybe I get this. Okay, put it somewhere here. Okay, so I got a resistor, um, and I want to make it 10K. So these things are not really that important, but uh, just to make it clean, it's a 10K. And of course, the, notice the colors change to the right colors. You know, um, we rotate it maybe. Okay, so I'm just trying to show you kind of how we do it. So, so maybe I put my resistor like right there. So this is now at pin 1, right, um, and then pin 1, uh, the switch bottom, I can connect here, right, maybe I can connect here, and like this point right here, 
any wire I connect from this point forward, it'll be like A, right? That could be my um, uh, logic level A I can generate from there, right? And then um, similarly, right, so if I uh, copy and, and uh, paste this, right, uh, maybe I put the next one at uh, this one, right? Eight, because, you know, this is valid. Um, and, uh, right, I can do something like this. And now I can have my two inputs, right? So this goes to five and this goes to ground. And by turning the switch one and the switch two, right, I can actually um, control um, A and B, right? My A and B. So maybe this will be my A somewhere here, and this will be my B, right? These are my two wires that I can use to move around. And as I move switch one and switch eight positions, I can change these to different values. And of course, I can always check with my multimeter what those voltages really are, right? Put the red over here and put the black over here and measure the voltage, right? And make sure the voltages are in those ranges I talked about in the beginning. So you can always do this, right? Now, what else? Well, um, you can also have um, um, uh, like an OR gate, right? We talked about 74LS08, right? So how do you put that? Well, you should put that maybe also in the middle like this, right? So things like dip packages like this with the switches and integrated circuits, they have to be put like this and where the middle valley there is kind of in the middle, right? So this way it's very easy to power up, right? It's very, very easy to power up. So you can move it around as you wish, but let me just put it right here or right there. I mean, it's not gonna really matter too much in this case. Um, but we know that pin 14, which is this one right here, pin 14, right? Pin 14 is gonna go to power supply, right? And pin seven right here is gonna go to ground, right here. So now you can see that those pins are grounds right so this 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 uh, um, this integrated circuit is now powered up so if you look here if you remember uh, pin 1 and pin 2 were the inputs pin 3 is the output how do I know that well if you look here this is a 7432 1 and 2 are inputs 3 is the output right and then of course 7 is ground 14 is power I've just done that except I don't have my inputs yet so maybe this is my A so I'll put that on pin 1 for example anywhere on this column is fine right and then this is pin 2 so maybe you put that over here and pin 3 right here you can measure the voltage here or piece of, put a piece of wire or something but this is where your output is so that's how you're going to measure your output so this is how you test for example um, one integrated circuit and once you get going with this um, really, the the other uh, circuits that we use are going to use the same uh, switch resistors, right? So all you're doing is uh, you're just um, putting different integrated circuits here, wiring them differently, but the inputs are going to be either A, just a single input, or two inputs. You have your two inputs here. That's going to be it. So basically, the switch and the resistors will stay here, uh, but the integrated circuits you add, um, you know, they will have to be powered, of course, 14 and 7, and then they're going to be the wired. They're going to have to be wired in certain ways. That one I'll leave to you, okay? So I think I, I, I went way over what I wanted to say, but you can see that this should be pretty straightforward. This is roughly how I would wire it, okay? But you may have a better way of wiring it. Perfectly fine. Perfectly fine, okay? And you can always make sure that you're wiring properly by making sure you run the right columns, right? And make sure that uh, you have the right pins, right? And the pin numbers are correct. And uh, make sure that uh, you have this picture. So you'll notice that in three of these, right? In the NAND, AND, and OR, the inputs are 1, 2, output 3. Input 4, 5, output 6. So you can see that the inputs and outputs are the same, except for the NOR. In NOR, they're a little bit different, aren't they? Right? Notice the difference. So don't assume. Always consult the uh, diagrams, and you should be just fine. So in, in this in this particular um, uh, laboratory session, experiment eight, we're going to be using these four gates. Uh, we won't be using the exclusive OR and the hex inverter. Hex meaning there's six inverters in there, but we will be using these four. 
okay? So I hope this gives you kind of an idea about how to proceed, uh, what to look for, you know, definitely uh, this, uh, this uh, logic circuit pinout uh, I will provide to you, right? I will provide to you. And then um, I will also give you uh, this picture here. So you have a reference to go by. And then I'll also give you what I kind of wrote up over here. Um, you know, I, I think you, you probably already know this, uh, but I just wanted to go over it. Just for completeness sake, uh, I'm sure you've covered this by now. Um, we've covered it definitely in our section. I hope you covered it in your section and you're probably well ahead of it. Um, so uh, I hope this is helpful. Um, uh, again, the, the write-up will be coming soon. And, but the write-up will be very uh, uh, straightforward because all we're going to be doing is we're going to be plugging in these uh, these uh, logic gates. And by the way, all the logic gates have the same form. They're all 14 dip, okay? 14 dip packages, 14 pins, seven on each row. They all look the same, but make sure you read the numbers, right? Make sure you read the numbers. They'll all say something like SN or some two letters, but look for the 74 LS and then the number, right? Some of them might have not LS, but something else, but you'll definitely see them uh, like 7400 is, is the uh, uh, 7400 is the uh, NAND gate, 7402 is the NOR gate, uh, 08 is the N gate, and 32 is the OR gate, right? So they're all 74. LS stands for low power shot gate, just a family of logic circuits, okay? Um, so I hope uh, this is helpful. Um, and um, I hope the uh, preparation is okay for you and uh, hope that you have a successful experiment and, um, and uh, that you will be able to complete it on time. Um, I, um, you know, I, look, I look forward to hearing from you if there are any comments. But for now, I'm going to sign off. Thank you very much. Good night. And look for the experiment right up as well as all these extra documents. Thank you.